Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. I want to welcome myself back, okay, to uh, to wake up legendary. And um, how am I looking? It looks like there's a little delay here, but am I looking good? We're obviously trying out some new audio uh, and or video equipment. Am I looking good? No delay. Good. Okay, Matt says good. Hey, my friends, I made it back. I made it back. I made it another year. Another trip around the sun. I get to take another trip around the sun. And uh, there's no crew that I'd rather do it with than y'all. Uh, and so we're going to be doing what we always do. This morning, we've got a volleyball coach, which I am so excited to talk to because, believe it or not, Johnny, welcome to the show. I played volleyball uh, in middle school, and I wasn't that bad at it. Welcome to the show, brother. Hey, got to start somewhere, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, we all do. I remember being new in volleyball. Um, got, I think I started in sixth grade, maybe right when I went into to, to middle school. And I remember wearing the big the big knee pads because we, <laughs> you know, because we played in our in our school gymnasium. So I wore the big and I was a little embarrassed by those. I thought, yeah, these are not the coolest things to be. These are not the coolest sports equipment in the world. But I, I grinded it out anyways. Yeah, yeah. They've definitely changed over the years. So they're a lot slimmer and uh, not so huge now. Yeah, I, I remember them being these big, almost a pillow on your knees. And I thought, exactly, oh, man, this is this is <laughs> not cool. Uh, so anyways, man, um, welcome. And uh, where are you calling in from? Are you a full time? Uh, and I assume where you're calling in from, you're a full time teacher slash volleyball coach. Is that the the? So no. actually, that's where I, that's where I was. I'm actually a full time uh, billing consultant for a startup okay. insurance company, but I'm here yeah. in the U.S. in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay. okay, okay. And where are you from? You're from Canada. Uh, no, I'm from Virginia, but oh, okay. um, have been in Tennessee for about 16 years now. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, cool, man. Well. Uh, what brought you and made you want to do this whole online marketing thing with us? What, uh, what attracted somebody who, um, you know, sounds like a pretty decent career that you have there and uh, not anything to be, you know, too ashamed of, uh, anyway, of course. Um, and, and the money I would assume is, is not that bad. Do you have a college degree as well? I do. Yes. Okay. So tell us what brought you online. What 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 are you looking for? What were you looking for? What started this whole thing? Yeah, so um, you know, back when I was finishing up college in the early two thousands, um, I decided I was going to switch my major and switch it again. And uh, some of that was just because I got a hold of um, some Jim Rohn teachings. <laughs> Yeah. Um, if you know him and of just course. the idea of, you know, creating a life and what does that look like? And so, um, you know, I dabbled in a little bit of uh, network marketing and mm. direct sales. Um, and then I decided uh, I was going to start a blog. So it's like, that's how you got to do it, right? You know, start mm. a blog and, and make money that way. Uh, so I worked on that for a couple of years, enjoyed it, but, um, never had anything to sell. So how do you profit yeah. if you don't have anything to sell? But, you know, it's good learning experience. And then, um, you know, since I had done the website, I uh, was just trying to figure out, you know, I don't want to be in this insurance role forever. It's not my, you know, ideal dream job, um, you know, pays the bills and everything. But how can I leverage my time? Um, because you know i at my wife and i have a one-year-old son and so i just i didn't have a lot of extra time mm -hmm. to figure things out so you know i did some online tutoring that was successful and then i came across a video um on facebook reels back in may and it was about the the business builder challenge and you know i watched i uh, clicked on clicked on it watched the video immediately signed up and started you know, the training the next day, because then why not? You know, yeah. I've, I've tried lots of things. Yeah, before. So, so um, 
what, how was this different? How was this experience or how has this experience, both the training and now executing been different than other side hustles or, or, um, ventures that you may have tried in the past businesses, except, you know, et cetera, yeah. not obviously very different than your, your job as right. a consultant, I would think. Um, uh, but it's interesting. Maybe we can talk about the difference between the consulting that you're doing and the consulting that maybe you could do a as a, you know, as a business owner on your own, but, but first and foremost, how is this different than other ventures? There may be some network marketers or some Amazoners or whatever right. that are listening, wondering, Hey, I've tried a lot of things. I need something to work. How is this different or what might I expect that's going to be different? So what's, what's your experience with the contrast? Yeah. I mean, I think uh, something that stands out the most, it's just the training that you receive in actually being able to take action a lot faster than some other things that I've been a part of. Mm. Um, you know, I'd even say your entry point is really low. Like it's, it's not a huge, I'm going to do all of these things and I got to go to business loan and, and get all this uh, set up and ready to go. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a more simple path, I think, to get started. Then the training is just unlike any other training I found. And I'll even say like when I go live, like, look, you can find training for free on YouTube or wherever you wanna go, you can find it. But you're gonna spend how much more of your time trying to find the training. You're gonna get all these different opinions and yeah. do it this way or that way. So why not just focus in and zone and just kind of hone in on, just do this, Yeah, you know? So I, I think that it just made it, uh, easy to get started and simple. And that's why I, I said, you know, why, why would I try, um, to keep figuring out blogging on my own? <laughs> yeah. You know, when that's a pretty you're, tough thing. You're right. If you, you know, a lot, a lot of times I would imagine for people who are trying to learn these skills, just kind of out there on in YouTube land and stuff, it would be sort of like taking a class at 10 or 20 different universities and trying to yeah, make it all make sense, you know? And it's exactly. not particularly that I've ever even said, hey, everybody out there is an idiot. I don't think everybody out there is an idiot. I think there's some people that got some really valuable things to say out there. And uh, if you if you want to take that particular person seriously and you want to learn from them and learn whatever they have to teach or whatever they're doing, then my recommendation is the same if you're going to come here and learn. It's go all in, fully immerse yourself, and don't just take one class and, and, and um, stand around and scratch your head and wonder why it all doesn't make sense. You know, it, it, it's the same thing you know, it's sort of the same rule applies to we can't get mad about the results that we aren't getting from the work we're not doing. It's like this entrepreneurship is as the, in building a successful business is as much about um, simplifying things, putting on the blinders. And actually, if you're, you know, you take the 15 day challenge, for example, actually finishing it, you know, and that that that's a good measuring stick for where your level of like commitment or discipline or your stick to like your ability to follow through. I'll ask everybody who's listening right now. Anybody relate to starting stuff and not following through or not finishing? How many how many unfinished projects do, do you have in your life right now? How uh, how many unfinished businesses that you started? But the truth is you didn't give it your all. That's the, I mean, sure. It may have not been the best of the, be there's a million things we could pick apart about every company or product or business or person mentor. But the truth is, and this is what I think is so freeing in why people start to finally get results in their business or in their life is they take that full ownership that, Hey, this is the common denominator, and all my failures are me. You know, and, and the and, and so I need to. It was kind of like that realization that I had to have when I walked into a, a you know a drug treatment center, and then eventually a twelve step meeting. And I I was blaming everybody in two thousand and four and five when I first got introduced to recovery, and then two thousand eight when I finally got clean. And the only reason why I got clean was because I started to actually 
realize I thought it was a complex, you know, a complex formula. I couldn't figure out my life. Why was it, you know, I'm always self-sabotaging. And it was like, well, because I'm not taking ownership. You know, I'm not, I'm not following through with things that I start so I don't feel good or positive and I'm not getting results. And, um, you know, I give up too soon. I quit. I quit too soon. And so how has this experience been different for you on the inside? The training's been better and more thorough. How have you, how is you, how is your commitment or your approach now different than other ventures you've had in the past? So I think for me, it's been more of just actually putting those blinders on, you know, and just saying, you know, for 90 days, what can I do? <laughs> you know, what can happen? Not worrying too much about what the results will actually be, but just that idea of, you know, trying to, trying to gain traction and some momentum, if you will, and being consistent. Mm -hmm. I think this is just the, for me, it's the first venture other than, you know, maybe some tutoring I did online where, you know, if I didn't show up, I'd be fired. So <laughs> you, you kind of had to, it still felt like a job. Um, but in terms of visit a business venture that I'm being consistent mm -hmm. at, you know, and I'm yep. being consistent in, in my life and what fits me in terms of how I want to do it. You yeah. know, because I'm I'm not going to be out there, you know, posting four or five times a day, whether you think that's what you need to be successful or not. I don't yeah. have the time, you know, for the, I would say, long term capacity <laughs> to do that. So I, I think it's just a matter of if you're going to do it exactly like you said, like, why wouldn't you do the 15 days? Um, you, you won't know what you need to know until you just just do it. And, and I think. Um, Sometimes maybe people get a little bit too in their head where they're thinking, well, I have to have it exactly right and know exactly what the end is before the beginning. And that's because yeah. I think that way a lot. And I just have to tell myself, no, all you have to do is just take this step forward that you have right now. So yeah. you wanted to post something at 8 a.m. and you didn't. Can you do it right now? <laughs> can you do it tonight? Yeah. Like, you know, there's simple things that you can do consistently on a, on a daily basis that, for me, were sim simple and easier to do than what I in other business ventures that I had. Yeah. You know, so I think that's what makes it easier. It's making a, a list, calling your calling right. him twice, gonna right. find out who's naughty or nice. I mean, exactly. like, yeah, I'm not Santa Claus here. I don't want to make a list right. of my friends and family and you know hawk them my you know, right. lotions, potions, and pills. I mean, it, yeah, no, that's a hard thing to do. I mean, I, I keep these, I keep these business cards here close to my desk. It's sort of like the ball and chain that I finally cut. Um, by the way, fellas, your wife is not the ball and chain you are. And the, the problem, the, the, the bullshit that you're wasting your time with, um, that's what I learned. I learned that my wife, my kids, all this other stuff were not the ball and chain in my business. It was the things that I was doing that was causing me misery and stress and not producing any results. And it was really, you know, it was a combination of my my bad habits, but also bad strategies. And the bad strategies was, you know, we we're talking about doing things they're a little bit simpler to do here. M much of that is because you can just kind of do it at home and or do it wherever you want. So you don't have to get all dressed up and go out and shake hands and kiss babies and try to pretend that you're something that you're not. I mean, uh, for me, that was what MLM was like for me. I had to try to pretend like I, what I did was, you know, first of all, this is just business cards that I finally started collecting because I couldn't afford to print anymore. You know, even though they were free, I still had to pay for the shipping because I was just passing out business cards, but I wasn't generating any, you know, any money from it. So I, then I started collecting people's, but I'm like, Oh, I got it figured out now, you know, and I did it. This didn't work either, but it, it put me a step closer to when I finally came online and saw these cats out here on the internet collecting email addresses. I said, well, that sure is hell a lot better than what I'm doing over here, collecting business cards, you know, uh, so it made sense, you know, sometimes the bad strategies, we have to do them in order to know when a strategy is like, oh, 
this this is good. So how do you give yourself a break? How do you not beat yourself up for past what you would consider failures or when things don't go the way you want them to go now? I mean, I, I didn't come up with this phrase, but I've heard it said before. And I like people say we often can kind of under well, we overestimate what we think we'll accomplish in 30, mm -hmm. 60, 90 days, but we grossly underestimate what we can actually accomplish if we do it longer, you know, for a year yeah. or more. And so for me, it's just been, I think it's been more of a, it, like if you're going to do something that's different than what you've done before, don't, you can't spend any time like beating yourself up about what you did that didn't work. You can learn yeah. from it because it's it's all part of shaping who you are as an individual and who, we, who you are as a person because there's great things you know I, I believe you can learn a lot in any venture job that you're in that you can take you know with you and you can know what to take and what not to take and it's yours to choose what you what you bring along with you to the next phase or what you put down so yeah. you have to make that choice in terms of what that is so for me it was just a matter of fail forward if you want to use that expression sure I, i'm failing forward um i'm learning you know i'm learning i'm growing i'm making changes in myself and how to actually do business online and how to be a better you know husband better father better friend so it's all things that i've learned so why beat myself up just because it didn't succeed the way i wanted to and maybe it was the path i needed to be on maybe that was the step that if i didn't take that i wouldn't be where i am today i don't know yeah, something a little more. It's a great, it's a great way to look at things. And I wanted to put the quote that you had actually yeah. um, just said up on the screen, so people could actually kind of read that and take that in, take a screenshot of it, write it down, um, take a picture of it with your phone. I, I, you know, again, it is not Johnny. Your, in you didn't you didn't come up with this right. quote, nor did I, and nor did I really come up with really anything. Come to think about it nor did anybody else that's that's living really in this in this um, era we all have we all are standing on the shoulders of giants in every industry and every thing that we're doing and it makes us more successful when we acknowledge that instead of acting like we are god you know um, but uh, this is so true man this is a great little piece of wisdom to marinate on it most people overestimate what or underestimate well the way that you have written overestimate what they can accomplish in three to four months and vastly underestimate what they can achieve in three to four years being it for the long term and long game and it's so true isn't it on a practical level we start with you know whatever this challenge say for example uh we we might sit around and see some people making some videos or whatever and but you know i how many of us sit on things and just takes months to make a decision to even spend seven dollars to go through a course you know mm -hmm. but then once we get started it's like what well, you know a week later we went through half of the challenge you know buzz through this buzz through that you know, posted a couple of videos on TikTok or whatever in whatever niche we're in or whatever product we're promoting. And we're like, why isn't this working? <laughs> and it's like, it's like, well, um, you know, it took you six months to make a decision. And then, you know, okay. you, you've only posted, you know, I see people and I, I don't, there's no judgment in my mind, but it's like, it's like, I, I feel that pain because after now having, recorded you know and i saw somebody post in the in the in the comments similar comment just a second ago i'm having a problem making videos or i'm i've made posted five videos and none of them are taken off or whatever and it's like oh, i feel your pain because i just posted my five thousandth video and it didn't take off it, it, you know what i mean i mean it's, it, it's like it's like that kind of that it never goes away it's just a part of the business it's exactly. just a part of the game. It's 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 like it's like being a baseball player and going up to the plate and 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 you just started playing baseball, you struck out every single at bat in your first game and you're like I'm a, I'm a failure. I'll, I'm never going to do and every baseball player in the entire world is going It's your first game, dude. Right. <laughs> it's your first game. You know, I've paid, played played 
thousands of games, and I'm still only have a batting average of 175, which means I hit just over one out of every 10, and that's good. Yep. It's great. <laughs> no, it's, it's exactly right. I was thinking, you know, when I coached volleyball, um, we, of course, we focused in on the season that we had, you know, that's right in front of us. But it was always about the long game. Where do we want to finish in the conference? Do we want to make the t- national tournament? What is it going to take to get there? And that's usually a longer plan. That's usually a three plus year plan. And so I, I think, I think just what if I could encourage anybody that's out there listening, it's just when I say think, you know, long term, I don't mean that you have to be committed to this exact thing and never move off of that for three to four years. I just think like if you see that glimpse of what somebody's success looks like and it looks like it's really fast, like Dave just said, it might have been six months of some sort of prep and you're seeing yeah the fruit of it or it's just an anomaly it's like some people it's you know it's the exception you it's never not the get rule. the full story you never get the full never. story and that's what's important to understand is that your life and how it feels and how it's hard and how it's scary we all are having that same experience that that's like and i had this kind of crazy like realization as i was walking through the airport um and all everybody, you know, we were in a line trying to get through customs and, um, and, you know, there's hundreds of people and they're all, I just had this moment, like each of these people has a micro life, like a, a but it feels huge to them. But in this, in this group of people, it's just, you know, it's a speck of sand. We all are a speck of sand. And but it feels so big and real and like we're the only one that's going through it. But what is one of the most one of the most empowering and I think I think supportive things that I ever learned and and, and it helped me get clean was that other people were struggling in the same way. Hallelujah. Holy shit. I'm not the only one feeling what I'm feeling. And I'm looking over there and I'm looking over there and they're getting through it. And then I realized, I had a realization, there's nothing I can go through that somebody else hasn't already been through who can help me through it. And in and, and that, once we look at, you know, if we can have a bit of a shift away from that daunting feeling that I'm in this alone and I've got no support and it's me against the world, you know, and, 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 and move into a place and sure, make sure that it's safe and that you feel comfortable here doing that. And if you do, then jump in all feet first, you know, head first, whatever, and realize that the feelings that you're all feeling, whether it be having a difficult time getting in front of the camera, you know, can't press that post button, whatever it is, or whatever the issues that you're having with your spouse and the, the, the mistrust or the misunderstanding or Whatever's happening, we all have gone through it. Not each person, everything, but the collective experience of the community here has gone through it. And we've survived. And many have thrived. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's just, I think it's a matter of, as an entrepreneur, whether you're wanting to start something kind of on the side, you know, or you're full in wherever you're at, like it, it's still that daily kind of uh, battle. And like you said, it doesn't matter whether it's your first video that didn't do well or your 5,000, you still feel like, oh yeah. God, what I do wrong? Why totally. don't they like this one? Like, well, this and the, problem with, it. <laughs> the problem with having, the problem with getting, like my experience has been like, I started doing this in my twenties and now I'm, I just turned 39. So I'm older. I'm, I'm, and I don't know if I'm wiser or slower and dumber. I don't know. You know, I I don't know. They say you get old, you know, but so as you get older, different things, you, you change. And the most important thing is to embrace yourself where you're at. Because if you live your whole life, when I get to this place or when I'm ready or when I'll get started when I feel like I know that is the death of your life. It's the death of your business because you're never going to be fully ready. 
you're only going to get older and get slower probably or grayer or burn more brain cells. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it, we, we, we trick ourselves into the, and I think this is one of the most common things that I've heard And and you tell me if you've experienced this, but I, I, I want to get started as an affiliate marketer and, and maybe one day I'll create my own either course coaching program or event. But even as an, as an affiliate marketer, I feel like I want to, you know, I want to know some stuff and I just don't feel like I know enough to start, you know, really creating content and getting started. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, and that is a, there's a truth in that. And usually the way that we deceive ourselves to procrastinate and prolong things is we, we, we say things that are most kind of true. It's like, no, I could, I could know more. I could learn more. I, 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 you know, I'm not, maybe I'm not really there yet and ready to start creating content and et cetera. But the truth of the matter is, is that you'll net, you, you'll never be ready. If, if you, if you continue down that picking yourself apart, then you'll never be ready. You'll never be ready to, um, I can name off the things that most of us want to do in life, but you'll never be ready to do those things. And you could just, it's just that what I realized is that a lot of my patterns and ways that I approach things were similar. So I had similar things that I said to myself also in other areas. I wanted to take my relate my marriage to a different place. I wanted to take my fatherhood to a different, I wanted to do all these things, but it was, I had a similar story no matter where I went. It was always kind of shame, don't feel good enough, feel like an imposter, you know what I mean? Feel like I got to be somebody else and can't really be myself. Yes, me, this is my story. And, 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 and always, and thank God, I just had, I guess, enough audacity or enough, you know, just, just, just plain ignorance to just kind of ask for forgiveness later instead of permission at the beginning. But I still um, struggle with that. All those imposter syndrome feelings, those are just my own unique ones. Um, what resonates with you when I say imposter syndrome? What comes up for you? Is there any particular part of your business or thing that you, that you do that really brings it out? And what are the feelings and what does it look like for you? Yeah. So I think the first thing that came to my head is when I think that maybe not that I'm not good enough, but that I, I'm not bold enough you know i'm not uh i'm not being controversial enough and that's why this person's doing well and i'm not you know or the week i'm in like well this just sucks like and i'm i'm horrible i mean i still have that that time like i never should have done this you know because i think it's all it's all there some of it is maybe what you're looking at and and seeing through whatever your influences are. But then I think most of it's just, it's just that battle that you have in your head. And I think that, you know, honestly, for, for those of you out there, it doesn't matter whether it's your business or you're still working, you know, in a nine to five or whatever, you're going to find imposter syndrome everywhere. So if you are experiencing that, but still on the fence of, should I get started? I don't know enough. It doesn't matter really, because you should just do it. Like you should just move forward anyway, because the time's going to pass. And if you were going to go for a new job, um, you'd have to, you couldn't, ha you couldn't come into the interview with your new position with all of these ideas of why it's not going to work out. Yeah. Cause they're not going to give you the job. So in your business, I think it's the same, like, yeah, feel it. That's okay. But move past it. Well, let me do every day. Let me do some live coaching right here. I see a message. We've got Irfan here. Welcome to the show, Irfan. Welcome to Legendary. He says, I am still confused. This I'm going to put his comment up here on the thing. I am stuck in the middle and don't know what to do. Well, look, I don't know your exact situation, but what I know is if you're stuck in the middle, keep going. Finish. Finish what it is that you're doing. If you're confused and you're stuck in the middle, then keep going. Well, I don't know how or this or that or somebody stopping me. Well, part of being an entrepreneur is becoming resourceful. 
identifying what is stopping me from going forward. Do I need to send an email to somebody? Do I need to, um, do, is there something that I need to do on my side? You know, so I need to, I need to understand what, what do I have power and control over? You know, what can I actually, because you're, you're never stuck. <laughs> you're actually not stuck, stuck. You're free. You, you could do anything you want. You could leave. I mean, if I was stuck somewhere and, and, and it was actually somebody else's fault, why I was stuck, I would just leave. I would just be like, well, I'm going to go do something else. But if you're honest and say, well, am I stuck because of something I'm not doing, something I'm afraid to do? Some Is there an email I'm not sending? Is there a call I'm not making? I mean, there's we can define stuck in so many ways. Um, it can be mental or it can be actually something that we physically feel like I'm stuck. I can't log into the back office. It's like, no, you're not stuck. You just did you use the password reset tool? which is the the thing that you click right under where it says, did you forget your password? This is a universal thing. And you would not believe, Johnny, how many people, you know, complain or they feel that they got scammed because they, they, they bought a digital product. The logins were emailed to them and just they didn't make that connection that and then they don't know how to click on a link and then. It's just all confusing. So it's like, well, hold on a second. I'm confused. This is new. But let me sit here for a second and try to figure this out. And that's where I see the the the, the massive gap between like how successful we are as a community and how successful we could be is like it's not the secrets. It's not, you know, it's the simple things that until you as an entrepreneur master like or even start to practice those simple little re being resourceful like do you know how to use a password reset tool like it's something that's so simple in understanding just basic things about like most websites and most membership sites nowadays just those basic things go so far and wow damn maybe i'm not stuck you know, now we can begin to shift your perspective for you feeling like you're stuck to realizing that you're not stuck. You're never stuck, you, you know, and you don't have to keep feeling stuck. The other one is I'm struggling. I'm stuck and I'm struggling. And the other thing is the more that we say that out loud, the more it's real to us, the more we believe it. Whose voice is more powerful than your own? For you, the first most powerful voice was the voice that you heard when you were a little child that you don't remember that began to form belief systems. But the second most powerful voice is the voice that we hear both in our head, but especially when we say things out loud, because now we've made them real. Does that make sense? And, and Johnny, what comes up for you? I I, I, I hope that was helpful to you, Ifron, or Irfan, and I hope that you... Um, you take that and know that you're powerful and know that you're capable and know that you're not stuck and, and that you can get out of any situation by either by most of the time, just keep moving, do something. And in this moment you did, you, you reached out, you left a comment, you got some feedback, right? And so there's a, you know, there's a, takeaway in that just that some you know the squeaky wheel gets the grease you know anyways johnny what's coming up for you brother yeah so i mean i think it's it's interesting because i've used those words before uh you know I, even just at different times in my life and i think like you said when it's in your mind and you're telling yourself something that you're going to start believing just think think what happens to the rest of your day are you all of a sudden struggling like in your household does it feel negative did yeah. you stub your toe on that? Like then whatever you're working on broke, like it can kind of trickle down, but so could thinking differently about it. So it's not just about your mind and only thinking positive things and that's going to fix everything. But, yeah. you know, if you know the rabbit hole, you can go down with the word you're speaking. Why not give yourself better words and then take action? Just take action. I mean, it's even in my business as simple as, I'm feeling stuck and I can't create new content. So should I just not do anything? No, I'm going to go back to a video I've posted before and I'll just change the music, change the comments, you know, and I'll repost yeah. it. 
and yeah. I feel good. <laughs> and yeah. I give myself yeah. a pat on the back. I did it. <laughs> well, and nowadays, one of the benefits of being a part of a community like this, where there's so many at this point, folks, I mean, you, you, our competitors are coming and watching our, our free content for God's sakes, you know, because there's so much of it. There's so much, there's so many resources here within this company and community. Um, it's, it's, it's your resourcefulness in owning that and being honest about that is so empowering. It will make you more money to own all of your shortcomings and understand them. I see so many men, and this is insane to me because most of them are from a previous generation and they're broke. They, 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 they have no weaknesses, no, no shortcomings. Nobody should disrespect me by pointing out that I have any, you know, weaknesses. And I don't want to talk about my weaknesses. I don't even want to, uh, and it's like, well, if I know my weaknesses, then I can stay in my lane. You know what I mean? And I don't have to keep going in all these. And you know what the freeing thing for me is, Johnny? Is that I go places and I just tell people, I don't know shit. Like I went out on a on a on a on a fishing boat in Turks and Caicos, and I'm I've been fishing most of my life and love to fish. I'm an avid boater. I have my own boat. But I I just said, I'm in foreign waters, dude. I have no idea what I'm doing. I didn't get on their boat and be like, oh, give me that fucking pole and, you know, get up there like an asshole. You know, I, I just, it's been so helpful to me, but I had to learn that kind of, you know, a lot on my own and it's helped me be successful um, because it's helped me to know my, my weaknesses and, 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 and own them. And, uh, and then I can get help. And how, how, why, that, why am I bringing that up? Because in a community, when you're learning a new skill and, and you're, and you're, you're going through a process of, of, of starting something new, um, you're going to have to be okay with your humanness. You'd be okay with your humanness. It, 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 there's going to be some shortcomings. There's going to be some things that you're not the greatest at. And if you, drill yourself in, 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 or worst, try to act like you don't suck at it. It's just so painful and you can't get the help that you need. And, and I mean, painful because that ego, Oh, in that it's a bitch, isn't it? But yeah. what has it been like for you to be new at something, being the volleyball coach, being the, the consultant, uh, the professional, what has it been like for you to, get humble maybe or or be new or how how have you learned more about your limitations and 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 actually acknowledge them so you can then receive some help some training what what comes up for you around this question i mean i think just in my career and careers i've been part of it's just a matter of knowing that i don't know it all um and that it's okay to get the feedback and then just to be willing to ask for the feedback. But then I, I think, I think sometimes I see too often people are always asking for feedback on everything they, they do and every video. And, and I get it. Like you want it, I understand. But at some point, like you, you just got to get a string of things going through, take the feedback as it comes. Occasionally I, you know, analyze it, identify it. But then don't be afraid if you really do feel like eh, I'm just not where I where I want to be and I need to get, you know, to the next place. Because I think something I don't know how this will relate to you guys, but and gals. But when I was a, first started coaching collegiate volleyball, um, I was big on just saying lots of things. So as we were going through the practices, I was using all sorts of words. And, and the, the head coach at the time stopped me. He said, less is more. Less is more. We can't keep stopping our practice for you to have a five minute explanation, you know, practice yeah. can continue. And so I would say that for you and your business, your business and the things that you want to work on can continue. You don't always have to stop to figure it out and move forward. Just keep like, there's no reason you couldn't not do videos or you could not send an email or could not post something. Um, I mean, physically, if something happened to you, I get it. 
yeah. while you're figuring it out. And that's just where I was because I had never done anything on camera like this before uh, before starting. It was, I'll post a picture of my kid or my family, but so it's new to me and I get frustrated just like anybody else gets frustrated um, figuring out what works and what doesn't, what sticks and what doesn't and the stuff that you want to stick and it doesn't and pisses you off. And then, you know, it's just all part of the game, yeah. I think that you just have to go through and you can't go through it if you never keep going. You can't go yeah. through it if you don't start and you can't go through it if you don't just keep doing it. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I, I love your point, which was a kind of a contrasting point, which is that sometimes we get a tendency to just be paralyzed until permission. And maybe we could write that down. Don't be paralyzed until permission just fail forward um yeah. because ultimately i I'll, I'll be honest with with all of you as somebody who's been in a role of a you know somebody who's giving a lot of feedback over the years it's frustrating to give feedback to somebody who's done nothing it just is so i mean if you're if you haven't done literally anything um and and you've kind of got a like uh why is this not working kind of attitude? It doesn't make somebody want to help you more. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I'm not talking about like me. I'm just talking about in life in general out. You know, I've been in a lot of circles where, <coughs> and I think life is like this too. It, nobody's going to help you unless you're helping yourself. That's just how life works. It doesn't matter where, what, you know, when, if, if you're just, if you're doing absolutely no, I mean, even the guy flying a sign got his ass out on the side of the road. I, I give him something for that. I'd, I'd give a guy a buck because I'd say, fuck, I'd want a beer if I was you too, you know? But um, nobody wants to help somebody who's not, you know, helping themselves. And so um, as a student, it's important to understand also how to be a great student, how to be a great mentee. And the way to be a great mentee is to, um, it's to, t I mean, if you really want to talk about, this is why I don't like the words. I don't use mentor co. I mean, it's, it's, it's great marketing words, but the truth is, is that there's not a men, a real mentee mentor relationship in most of internet marketing. Because each both sides are not committed in the in the way that they need to be for it. You know what I'm talking about coming from sports. An athlete, an athlete who goes and plays for a high school or college team or whatever, that athlete is is likely playing their ass off, man. I mean, I was watching um, the movie Hustle, the new Adam Sandler movie Hustle on the flight home yesterday, and seeing that that athlete and the way he was working. Um, made Adam Sandler, who was his kind of like his agent or the guy who found him, like it just made each, they were each getting up earlier than the other in the more, you know what I mean? Waking each other up, giving each, you know, because they were fired up. And that's, 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 you know, if we only realized how inspirational it is when we see, like if me personally, when I see somebody working their ass off and trying and stuff, I want to help them a million times more than if they're just complaining and not doing anything. And so it's also about how to get what you want as a student. Like if I go into, like I've got a therapist, multiple, I've got one therapist I see here locally and one I travel, I'm a group, part of a group. I've got other people um, that I that I look to for for advice or that I'm learning different things from. And my goal is always to try to like really take the knowledge that they're sharing and put it to use. That's how I respect myself and respect them. And so, you know, it's it's um, you know, going back to your point about it's it can be just as damaging to be sitting around and not be willing to do anything until somebody like comes in and gives you permission or until somebody says, that's the exact right thing you should do. It's like none of us, none of us had somebody sitting next to us saying, that's the exact right thing you should do. Every single person that's successful took 
unbelievable risk with their own ego and their own reputation and like all that's why success is earned not given what comes up for you coach around that you know i just think if you were starting any business and everybody did it exactly the same way like it was the same way then you'd have to think how could i separate myself from somebody else you can only do that by being you you know, because you're going to find things that are similar. And so I think when I think of a team and how we would build a team, I may have two or three players that are vying for the same position, you know, and in preseason, we're trying to figure out who's going to get that position. And then all throughout the season, if you're not meeting the criteria, you may get bumped in. So yeah. you're still going to you're still going to be putting in the effort. Because it's what it's what you want, what's your end goal? You know, you're working so hard to be whatever, you know, that thing is. And I and I think for for a business owner and just to think about it from that frame of mind is if you're running a business, you have to run a business. And so how does that work? There's gonna be times where if you wanna run such and such business and you never wanted to get down in the plumbing, but you're out there getting started and you gotta get your hands dirty. You know, there's yeah. stuff that you just have to do. As a restaurant and, owner, you can't, you got to get in right. there and clean the toilets. Right. You know, nobody's going to yeah, yeah. clean the toilets for you unless you call them and pay them. But right. if you own the business, nobody, it's nobody else's responsibility. You can't cut. That'd be like if I'm a restaurant owner and some, and I haven't cleaned the bathroom or pay anybody to clean the bathroom and a, and a customer comes in and then they say the bathroom is really dirty. And I go, how dare you say that? How dare you say, you know what I mean? And they're like, <laughs> okay, I'm not coming back here. They don't care. You know, so we create all these shitty situations by, you know, and, and that's what I'm trying to teach my kids is that, like, for example, when they start whining or they start, like, you know what I mean? Like having a temper tantrum or something. I don't ever say bad boy or bad girl. I say, that's not how to get what you want. Right. That's not how to get what you want. Let me teach you how to get what you want. So I teach them about negotiating, you know, negotiating against me, you know, give me a counter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You don't want to go to bed right now. Let's, 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 let's talk about this and, yeah. and give me some effort. Don't just lay on the ground and pound your fist because as a human being, Nobody's going to sit around unless you literally are that person's parent and deal with that. There's just too many people and too many things in the world to do. So as entrepreneurs, that's, I have to take ownership over my training and then I have to take ownership over my business when I launch it. Nobody's going to come wake me up to make the videos. Nobody's going to give me an injection of inspiration or creativity. I got to put in the same work that everybody else put in to get to that place that I want to get to. And back to your point about I can accomplish much more than I think. What happens is those weeks and months go by because you're actually doing shit and you're busy. And before you know it, you come up for air. No, you're not rich, but you've had a couple of, you know, thousand dollar days or or thousand dollar weeks, or you know, you maybe you've you've done more. You look back over the last 12 months, you go, son of a bitch. Right. I've actually accomplished some stuff. Right. No, it's exactly right. I mean, when I had my blog, it was I looked back a year later and I said, Oh, I have 50 blog articles. I didn't make anything. But then now, as I'm reframing my mind, I think, yeah, but I wrote a lot of good stuff and I can use that in some of my email campaigns. Right in I'm this moment now. that's hap that's happening for you right in this moment. Exactly. So it's wow. been, you know. Four four year old articles I wrote. I don't even have the the domain anymore, but I still yeah. have the material. So why not use right. some of that same material? So it wasn't a waste, you know. But That's a I reframe still frame what you just did. Right. Re reframe. You put that same picture just into a different frame, and it's like that's a totally different picture now. Right. Yeah. And we can do that anytime we choose. Yeah. It's all up to us to choose yeah. to do it. Well, um, give us one tip about how you got started with your marketing. What's been something that's been working for you over the last weeks or months that you would attribute, hey, I, I started going live or I started doing this in my is there anything that you know you could you could point to and say, hey, give test this out, folks. 
who are listening this morning, try this out. It's not a guarantee, but but this this was a tweak, even an example of a of a change that you made or a, a, a you know a teachable moment. What would you attribute some of your success to over the the recent weeks or months? You know, I, I think in terms of doing videos, um, you know, TikTok was something that I had never even downloaded, and I thought, you know, I'll just I'll just start with that. And so I tried a lot of things, tried to learn from others that have done similar content and make stuff of my own. Um, but I think what I needed most was just the practice, how to record a video and stop it and edit it to even, you know, not without having to buy software, like how to do it. And so, uh, something that I did is I, I purchased a book that was all about side hustles. Um, and I went through every chapter of the book just to make like 30 pieces of content. And each content was like, I don't know, 20 yeah. seconds. And that helped me get comfortable being on the camera did i get millions of views on those no i didn't but i got audience members i got people on my email you know list and if nothing else it was all for me to just get the practice that i thank needed. you thank thank you coach because we often we 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 don't discount it in in athletics but we do in business man we do in you know, social media in this era of, you know, kind of fast money, cryptocurrency side, you know, you're seeing an ad every somebody, you know, we're all getting rich on the internet, it, it seems like. And it's just, it's A, it's not true. And B, it requires practice just like anything else. If you're going to win a championship, if you're going to go to the playoffs, if you're going to have a good season, it's because you practiced, man. It's because you were ready for the the game. And I love that you point that out because how often do we discount what we what we did because it didn't just get one result, which was maybe money or something, but all of the other things, how comfortable you are on camera, how you learn the app. Ladies, is there anybody on here who knows how to do like crochet or anything? or any sewing or anything, something that's any craftsmen or woodworkers or people that do unique things with your, with your hands or any tools, anybody ever had to learn how to use a drill or a, or a, or a hammer. So you, I mean, uh, listen, I got carpenters who are still learning how to use nail guns. I had a guy not too long ago, big, big buddy of mine was, was on a ladder and nailing a, with a hand, with a, with a, and he missed it and came around and shot himself in the chest. Oh, God. No shit. It was oh crazy. Gosh. So anyways, he's still learning how to use that tool. But Damn. my point is, is that, folks, these are all tools. For example, your editing apps or even an app like TikTok nowadays, it's a tool you do need to spend a certain amount of time on to just learn how to use it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's normal you're gonna be an absolute idiot on it at the beginning you're not gonna know anything you're i mean you're just gonna be you're gonna feel so stupid and we all did and still do many i mean i thank god for whatever sort of you know i have some special thing uh that i think i was born with that makes it easier for me to be an idiot in front of other people because, you know, I mean, I've just been willing to, you know, to just kind of go out on a limb. Um, and I've, I've been burned so many times, but it's just been the most profitable skill I've ever think I've I was either. Maybe I developed it. I don't know. Maybe I developed it in sports when they just I can kick my ass out onto the field and I had no choice. They were like, well, you're batting fourth. It was like, oh, my God, you know. Right start sweating and, you know, having night terrors and everything. Cause I'm, you know, pitching a game or whatever, but you know, maybe it was sports that taught me how to get out there, but just taking that step and, in realizing, um, Hey, I gotta, I gotta learn this, this tool. I gotta learn this craft. I'm going to suck at it. And, Oh shit. Now I'm not a kid anymore. I don't have a coach who's standing over and that's not what a coach in this business is either. Could you touch on that before we wrap about this, this expectation of, you know, kind of coaching and, and even consulting for a lot of people who think that, you know, 
it is hand holding and what they need is hand holding. When in reality, my experience is hand holding is way too close to enabling. Uh, it's not what I need. I need to be pushed to, to, to do two things. Number one, to realize that I have inside what I need to be successful. And number two, that in order for me to become successful, I'm going to have to be the one who practices the skills. And I, I'm not going to be able to, it doesn't happen by osmosis. It's not something I can just, you know, it's not like religion or maybe, you know, where you're, you accept something and now you're good. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I'm just keeping it real. Hat throw up. Come on now, people. Yeah, this ain't baptism and I ain't your Lord and Savior. You got to work that ass. Yeah. That's a fact, Jack. That's yeah. a fact, Jack. Anyways, coach, I'm 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 rambling at this point. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, bring us home. What what are your yeah. final thoughts on 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 uh your journey here and what people need to 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 hear from you, or what you need to say, um, uh, in order to uh, for us to wrap up, and for you to, I want you to be, um, you know, I, I hope you're proud of yourself too, man, because it's a it's a it's a wonderful accomplishment when, you know, you just you just decide to take on something new that's what the that's where the magic is it's not that you're an entrepreneur it's not that you're this it's not that you're that i'm nothing i'm just a guy who just decides to do some new shit and and i none of us have any idea where something is going to take us when we get started we have no clue and so obviously congrats on your success and and i'm sure there's much more of that coming your way and congrats on being, you know, willing as a, a you know, like me, a middle-aged guy, basically, <laughs> um, to try something new, dude, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, you know, I'm just so grateful to be here, uh, first off. So thanks for having me. But I would just say, I think just overall, wherever you're at in life, um, I do go live on my TikToks and I always end it with after, you know, going through what I, what I talk about, you know, there's no perfect career or, you know, uh, your own job that's just going to, you'll never have something that doesn't tick you off about or something that just doesn't get inside of you and make you angry. You've got to remember that above all, you're a human being and that is important. You have people that love you, that depend on you, that, you know, that need you. So hang on to that while you're hanging on to that. Try some stuff. You know, get started. And if you have to get restarted, get restarted. Just do yeah, it and absolutely. then put put the blinders on and just say for 90 days. If you can't do 90, say 30. Heck, just say a week. This say week. 30 say seconds. Sure, I'm going to get right. the next 30 seconds. Right. Finish this and go post something. Go write an email and, you know, just send it. Because <laughs> if you don't take that step to get the momentum, You'll never learn what it is that you need to learn to get better at whatever it is that you're trying to do. So whatever your focus is, you know, just put the work in and be encouraged that it's okay to put the work in and feel crappy about it. It's okay to not have any desire or motivation to do it and do it anyway. It's okay mm -hmm. to feel fantastic and do it like feel the emotions, but do it anyway, no matter what it is. Well said. Well, brother, listen. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for doing what you do and, um, you know, letting us hop in on the journey with you and come back and see me on a, on a follow-up episode if you would. Love it. All right, Johnny. Take care, coach. Bye. Bye. See you, buddy. All right, my friends. I want to shout out Christina for the massive courage on this comment. Rescheduled my appointment with the advisor due to no confidence, but can't walk away. New day tomorrow. Let's work through this. Yeah. Holy, that gets me fired up. You know I mean? I don't care who you are. If that doesn't get you fired up, you better go check your pulse. Um, because, you know, this is about that. Millions of, mo millions of micro moments like that. Millions of micro moments just like that. We all have them. We all have them. Our life is full of them. Trust me. Um, I may look confident in this scenario, but be totally 
you know, lacking in confidence in something else that I'm doing. I, I mean, be okay with your humanness, people. You're starting something new. You're not going to walk in like Mr. T, pity and no fools. But don't pity yourself either because you're not a fool. You're somebody who's courageous and powerful because you're starting something new. Embrace that. Focus on that. Fail forward. Be legendary. We'll see you back here for another episode tomorrow.